Hi everyone, James Mansell here bringing you yet another video. Oh my God, you guys, I decided, I think it's time that I revisit an old topic. Now I saw a lot of you have been using my old, 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 old tutorials on how to tease a wig. And well, looking back at it, a lot of that information is, some of it's relevant, but a lot of it is really outdated. And I've since changed my style up quite a bit. So I decided why not go through different methods of teasing and make a dedicated video so that you can pick which one is best for you. So I am going to start with the very method of teasing that I use the most, which is just classical teasing with a teasing comb. This is a teasing comb. You can see it has the little bristles on it. And the ones with little like plastic bristles sticking out are often really pretty good to use for this, especially if you're doing like a base tease. They're great because they tease synthetic hair down relatively quickly. And synthetic hair is a tricky beast. You never quite know what you're gonna get with it. So sometimes it's really good. Sometimes the fibers are awful and you fight with it. So that's why we have different methods of how you approach it. Now, to do a basic tease, I take my brush and I'm holding the end like that to give me a grip. And I just start pushing it down and slowly working it down. Take a break, pull anything that's looping up away and starting again. And generally what I'm doing here is just creating like a little cloud and I'll start pulling sections out like that. And that's a pretty good start to a teasing. And you'll notice in the front section, this tends to happen where the hair is ventilated. So what I do is take it and just vent, push it down a little bit more. You could also use a pick or something like that to do this. You can also just use a teasing brush. All right, so next section, let's start again and just repeat that process, pushing it down, pulling it through, pushing it down, pulling it through. Pack, pack, flick, pack, pack, flick, pack, pack, flick. Pack, pack, flick, pack, pack, flick. And this one doesn't really need to get pushed down a whole lot, but I'll show you it anyway. If you use a pick, you can just do that and just start pushing, teasing down more like that. And it'll start standing up like that. And you basically do this all throughout the wig. I do little sections at a time. You'll be tempted to like grab huge sections of hair and just like jerk, jacking it away. That's how sections start to get mixed up. And when you start to do your brush out, you'll notice that like it starts to look real, real crazy and you start getting holes in your hair. So try not to do that because it will create holes. Do the pack, pack, flick, be patient. If you feel yourself, you know, getting tired with it, you just want to speed through it, don't. Just walk away from it, come back to it. Whatever you do, there is no shortcut to teasing. <laughs> it's gonna take a while. And I just work my way down the hairline like that. And I'm gonna flip over and do the other side too. But for the most part, I'm just working my way down. And this I do completely without hairspray. Some people use hairspray, I usually don't. I feel like it starts to add like a weird tackiness to the hair. I know it can help with like really, really slippery hair from time to time. And I noticed in my old, old video that a lot of you keep tagging me in that you're using, I did use hairspray in it. And I've since changed my method. I just do it dry now because again, like I feel like I get a better result when I do it dry. You can certainly do hairspray if you're doing like, you know, multiple teases, like a double tease. But for a regular old tease like this, Dry is fine. You don't want to like create too much work for yourself because sometimes the hair will start to get sticky. Yeah, it could just be a bigger mess than it needs to be. And teasing's already messy. Now, everybody has their own different methods for teasing. I know Wigs by Vanity does a method where she sprays the base so that it's more solid and doesn't move around while she's styling the hair. I generally just pack the hair down and create a base tease and just go from there. Like everyone's got different ways of doing it. There is really no correct way to do it. <laughs> Like, especially with synthetic hair, it's such a wild beast. It's not like human hair, where the method you're taught is generally the method you do. Synthetic hair, we have to like create shortcuts. We have to figure out ways around it. Because like, again, it's not real hair, so it doesn't have a follicle, it's plastic. So we're manipulating it with teasing so that it'll go down. Now, you can keep doing this all throughout the wig. Just be mindful of sections because each section of a wig basically serves a different purpose. Like the hairline is serving a purpose here to be seen. Whereas the back, you can tell when you start dividing up the hair, like where the lace stops and where the wiglet begins. This is the wiglet going back at the crown. It's generally a smart idea if you're doing for like, if you're doing big drag queen hair to take the section and tease it upward so that's standing straight upward. You'll get more height that way. 
rather than just like teasing it back so that it leans back. You wanna make sure that at least like the teasing is standing upright. That's what I do, because you get more height that way. See, upright like that instead of like teasing it back so that it starts to lean. Upright, it stands straight up and you get more volume. You may be wondering, James, well, what do I do now? I have two sections here that are clearly different sections of hair. How do I join them together? Well, this is a method called French lacing, where you take two sections like that and brush through it a little bit and re-tease again to join them. And it's the pack pack flick, only they're joining together now. And this will create a stronger base for a wig. Now the tease base is really strong and together. And that's the front and the beginning of the back of the wig. And we do this throughout the wig and then you smooth it out. But this video is not about smoothing. This is about teasing. So now I'm gonna tease the rest of this wig and I'm gonna move on to our next method of teasing. <laughs> Welcome back. Now it's time for method two on teasing. Now for those of you who struggle with getting teasing to like go down, this is the method you wanna try. Now bear in mind, we are using a heat tool on a synthetic wig. So if you're gonna do this, make sure you test it out on a swatch in the very, very back of the hair. That way you can make sure the wig is heat friendly. Some wigs are meant to take high levels of heat and some are not. So you have to be aware of that when you are styling your hair and just test out a swatch to make sure it's not gonna burn on you and then you ruin a whole wig right in the front. So this method to get the fluffy tees, we're gonna use a hair crimper. Now, I'm not doing anything in the front because we are changing the texture of the hair. So it's gonna put a crimp in the hair and it's not gonna look right if you're doing like, say, a Marilyn wave or anything like that. So this is only to be used to create like a nice crimp at the base that's gonna be easier for you to tease. Now, I'm gonna the crimper here and we're gonna press it in in small sections at a time. This does take longer, but it is gonna make the teasing a lot easier for you. Now I'm starting this at the wiglet part of the wig and not the part that has the lace because this is all the front section of the hair, our soft section. You don't wanna do anything crazy like this to the soft section because that's gonna be seen. The wiglet is great because this is gonna be the start of the teasing. Now with the crimps there, it's hot set so we can just start teasing it now. And it's gonna tease down really easily. See, it's already getting down there, it's really fluffy. And if you notice, you see a wig that has permatease in it, the permatease section of the hair actually has crimp in it. Like the classic way of doing this in the 60s when they did permatease in all the wigs, like 60s and 70s, they had crimped texture in the face of the wig. So that it had teasing that was just permanently in the wig. And like that, you get a nice section for a base and you just keep with that to get it even fluffier and just tease it normal. Now that's for a permatease base. I'll show you how to get it even fluffier. So we're gonna take another section of hair not that thick, a little thinner than that. Going like maximum, maybe three tracks. But not trying to get too thick, otherwise it's not gonna crimp. One, two. Go up another section, three. Maybe a little bit more here. All right, now take that and tease it some more and look how easily that teases down. And it's also the heat is gonna hot set it too, which also works for teasing. Now that's a big, cloudy, fluffy tease. Now check it out, this is the four section, giving you that nice fluffy tease, and this is the small section for a nice perma tease. Now the crimping I usually just do on the crown, I don't do it for the whole wig, that's like overkill. You can if you want to, but you honestly do not have to. And for the front section, we are just gonna tease it regular. You don't wanna put the crimps in that because like I said, it's gonna create two different hair textures. So when you start to smooth it out, you're gonna see crimps in the hair. Just don't do that. Tease it normal. And yeah, that is the crimp method. All right, now I'm going to wrap her up and I'll be right back with our next <laughs> method. Welcome back. Okay, one thing I forgot to mention for the crimping method, one thing to bear in mind is, is that the crimping method is gonna be really, really hard to get the hair back from. If you ever wanna like, you know, reset it and completely steam it out, it's gonna take so long. And chances are it might not come back because those crimps are like really hard to get straight again. So just bear that in mind when you do the crimping method. That's why I recommend doing it from the wiglet back and not the front hair. All right, now we are going to try another method. This one's a little experimental because I personally have never really done this. 
Ernie's been watching a lot of cosplay videos and this is a method they swear by for doing teasing. So I'm gonna try it out because I've been watching along with them and they seem to get good results from it. So it is basically a flat iron method. It's a hot set method, similar to the crimping iron, only it doesn't have the crimps. We're gonna heat a section and basically we're gonna hot set the hair. Oh yeah, that hair is hot. Now, grab my teasing brush. It does pack down nicely, I will give them that. Oh, yeah, that's great. I saw some of them run the, throughout like, the whole wig, but that also will get rid of the curl and I don't wanna get rid of the curl. So I'm only doing it to about, you know, midway at the most. Yeah, that works pretty good for teasing. That's not bad. I like that, okay. Now, personally, I probably would do this in the crown section and not the front, but everyone, like the videos I've watched, they do it all over. <laughs> they just sit there for hours, you know, smoothing it out. Personally, I would just do a regular tease in the front, but to each their own. They know what they're doing, I know what I like to do. Everyone, like I said, has their own method for teasing. Now I have my flat iron plugged on to about medium to high, not full high, because my flat iron is really old, so it gets really, really, really hot. But like I said before, test the different settings in the back of the wig, just to make sure you don't have that fiasco where it burns right in the front and you can't go back from it. Test your hair swatch first before you just jump right onto the project. Okay. No, that works really well for teasing it out. Like the hot set really does do a good job of like getting the hair to work down smoothly, especially for really difficult hair. I could see doing this. Pause, warning, I must tell you that once you do this, it will hot set the hair in place. Like it gets really, really like set in place, like really rock solid hard. So bear that in mind when you're doing this flat iron method, it will set this hair in place super hard. So be sure and do it to a section you want to stay stiff. Cause it's gonna be really hard to get the hair back because not all synthetic fibers are that great. Some are gonna be more difficult than others, especially like pastel colors. I always usually have really difficult time with them. I don't know what it is. So yeah, I definitely would probably try this out on like a color like that. This or a crimping method, definitely. But this is a pretty good way to do it. I'm not mad at it. It's a little faster than the crimper, but I think it's also because my crimper is very small and it requires a lot of my hand strength. Whereas this, I know it's, I know the grip on it already. But no, I like it. That's a fun method. I might try that in the future. That is a base tease using a flat iron. Not bad. I like it. That is how she looks. I'm not mad at it. I think it's a really fun method. Like cosplayers are always onto something. They are groundbreaking and discovering new ways, especially in just hairstyling and everything. So yeah, that's great. I love that. Good job. <laughs> All right, now I'm going to wrap this up and I'll be right back with my final thoughts. <laughs> All right, welcome back. Okay, so my final thoughts class are, I have to say, I personally always just kind of lean towards doing a regular tease with a comb. That's usually just what I do because I just don't feel like looking for something to like have an extra tool for teasing. But definitely if you are struggling with getting like a fluffy tease, look into doing a heat tool with it. You know, always test out your hair before you start it. Okay, try a back swatch, cut a little piece of it from the very, very nape and test on that to make sure the hair is not gonna sear and just melt together. Because like I said, not all synthetic fibers are built equally. Some are not as good as others. But this is definitely a great little cheat code to get good teasing, especially if you struggle a lot with just doing a regular base tease. And if you're wondering how to smooth out hair, or how to style the hair, I have plenty of videos in my playlist teaching you many different methods on hair styling. Just watch my videos, honestly. I'm constantly giving away information for you to just to take in there if you're curious about hair styling, wig styling especially. Because synthetic hair is challenging and there's many different ways to do it. So, <laughs> I had fun, I hope you guys did too, and I hope you learned something because Again, even I learned something today. I tried a new method that I never tried before. Now, the reason I want to do this video is because I know a lot of you have been tagging me in videos of you styling your Halloween wigs using my very first tease out tutorial. And a lot of things have changed since then. So I wanted to update you on how I actually tease my hair and what methods I use. And 
things that might help you out if you're brand new to hairstyling, especially styling synthetic wigs. So if you're watching this in the future during Halloween, hi, boo. Now, don't forget to like, comment, and subscribe. And until next time, bye. Now hit the outro. Click here and see me try out the Kimchi X Trixie Mattel palette or see how I get rock solid hair. Come on, click it. You know you want to. If you don't click it, I'll invite you to a dinner party at the House of Dragons. So click it.